Hi there, my name is Tim Middleton. I'm a member of the Oracle Coherence Development Team. Welcome to this screencast on the new UJ Visual VM plugin available in Coherence 12.1.3. The agenda will begin today with an overview of the plugin, and then we'll spend most of the time in a demonstration where I'll install it and show you some of the features. We'll monitor a standalone cluster as well as monitoring managed coherence service clusters. The Coherence J Visual VM plugin is a lightweight developer focused plugin for viewing general cluster information as well as aggregated coherence mBeans. It's built as a standard NetBeans module utilizing the J Visual VM plugin architecture to provide seamless integration with J Visual VM. Information is presented in a tabular form or over time as graphs to allow for real time analysis and troubleshooting of a cluster. It also provides visual cues for pertinent information such as thread utilizations. It also supports managed coherent servers within WebLogic Server and traditional standalone clusters. It's been part of the coherence incubator but now is being released as part of the product in 12.1.3. It displays information automatically based upon enabled functionality. This includes general cluster information, machines and nodes, services, caches, proxy servers, coherence web and elastic data. All data tables are exportable as CSV for further analysis. This is a configurable data refresh rate to ensure optimal coherence cluster performance. It also supports coherence versions 3.5 and above via local or remote JMX connections to coherence mBean servers. There are also drill down capabilities for services and caches, allowing a per node view of information such as thread utilization, task and request details. It's available from JDK 1.7 update 40 and above, but you can connect to some clusters running older Java versions via remote JMX connections. It's now part of the Coherence product installed from 12.1.3, so it's available in the plugins directory off your Coherence home. It runs on any platform supported by the JDK. It also utilizes a new run tabular report capability of the reporter to more efficiently gather statistics. There's also additional context sensitive information available by right click on selected tables. This includes operations such as reporting scheduled distributions for a service. There are also future plans to support new coherence features including recoverable caching and federation. Also additional context sensitive options will become available. After installing the plugin, there are a number of options you can pass to the JVM command line to configure plugin behavior. For example, you can change the default time to refresh statistics from 30 seconds. This will add additional load to the cluster, but your information will be updated more regularly. You can also increase the time scale for the graphs. By default, it's around approximately 12 hours of data will be shown, but you can increase that. You can also log diagnostic information about JMX query times. Down below you can see an example of passing these options to JVM. So where does the plugin fit in? The JVM plugin is a developer focused lightweight plugin ideal for development environments. The coherence management pack for Oracle Enterprise Manager is a complete management and monitoring enterprise solution. It stores historical results, gives you reporting, allows you to generate alerts and perform Java diagnostics. So let's now look at a demonstration. I'm going to first install the Visual VM plugin. I'm going to show you monitoring a standalone cluster as well as a managed coherent service cluster. Firstly, what I'm going to do is to install the JVisual VM plugin. I'm starting JVisual VM for this demonstration with a refresh time of 10 seconds. So once this starts up, I go to the Tools Plugins option. So you can see here that under the available plugins, which are the official plugins from the J Visual VM team, there are quite a few. At the moment I've got the Visual VM MBeans plugin installed which gives you a sort of like a J console view of the MBean tree, which is very useful. So I go to the downloaded plugins and click on add plugin. And we can see here I'm in my coherence home plugins J Visual VM directory and I've got my J Visual VM dot NBN or NetBeans module. Once I click on OK, I can see some information about the plugin when it was built and some description. Just click on the install here and follow the uh, wizard. OK, 
Okay, so now we've got that installed. So what we're going to do is just start up a coherence cluster. So let's go and start a case server with minus jmx, which will start an mbean server. Let's start another one. And then we're going to start a coherence console. Okay, so let's go back to JVisual VM. If we click on applications, we can see we've got the default case server application running here, or both of them, and, and the console. You can connect to a local application, or you can connect to a remote application here. So I just click on the default case server, and we can see the tabs displayed. If we go to the mbeans tab, we can see the cluster mbean here. Now what happens is when you connect to a process, it looks for the existence of this mbean, and if it's there, it will display the coherence tab. So let's have a look at what's on the coherence tab. So under there, there's a number of sub tabs. So the first one is the cluster overview, which gives you some general cluster information above the top here, including the name, the version, how many members, etc. Then shows you a graph of the cluster memory details. So in all these graphs, you just hover over and you can see the current details at a particular time. So you can see we've got a, approximately a gig of RAM and there's 195 gig used. Sorry, 195 meg used. You can also see we've got the cluster machines load average. So for all the machines that make up this cluster, here's the maximum and average load average. There's only one machine in this case. We've also got the packet publisher success rate and the pu packet receiver success rate, which are important measures of a cluster's health. Let's have a look at the machines tab. So in this one here, we can see all the machines that make up the cluster. So in this case, there's only one machine and we can see the details such as core counts, load averages and so on. And we also see a more detailed graph of the load averages here. We can also see information on free physical memory across those machines. If we then have a look at the machines, uh, the members tab, we've got some uh, overview information about the cluster again, so the cluster information, the version and the total members, including also the departure count, which is important. The license mode plus some general cluster memory information. Then we've got the details here. So for each of the nodes that make up the cluster, we've got their unicast address, the port, the role, and the packet publisher receiver rates, send queue plus memory information. We then see a more detailed graph of the cluster memory information. You can see here there's probably a GC happened somewhere there as the memory, the used memory goes down. Next we go to the services tab. We can see here the individual services that are running out of the box, and this is a, just a dem demonstration cache config that comes out of the box. You can see here we've got the services, the status HA if it's applicable, the number of members, how many are storage enabled, and some partition information. And I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. We can also see we've got information when you select a service, so I'll do that in a moment. Go to the caches tab too where we've got the caches and more information, but we obviously haven't got any caches to find, so let's go and define some now. So I'm going to create a cache called uh, dist tim. By default, it's an example distributed. It's a distributed case service, so let's put some data into this. So if we go back to the Visual VM plugin now, we've set the refresh to 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, the information is going to be requeried from the JMX Embed server. So we can see here we've selected the particular cache, and we can see the individual node details and the information broken down by node. So here we see the cache, the size, the memory, in bytes and megabytes, and then we also see the average object size, which is 317 for this. We also see the node details, as I said, and some individual case storage details, which I'll show in a moment. So let's create another cache. And I'll put some um, data in this, 50,000 in this. If we go back, we can see the cache has been created here. And I can select that one. And on the next refresh, it will display the information about that cache. So if I go back to the services now and click on this, 
we can see node by node information of the services. So this particular service is running on three nodes. Two of them are storage enabled and one is storage disabled. We can tell this one storage disabled and no threads there. So when we select a particular service, we can then see on the right here the graphs are displayed. There's no utilization at the moment. I'll show you that in a moment. So we can see a graph of the task average duration for that particular service, the task backlog for that service, and then request average duration. So again, I can look at particular individual service. I can actually look at, say, the invocation service here and get the details of that. So when you select a cache, sorry, when you select a service, it will then display the node by node detail. So let's go back to the distributed cache service here. Let me start another member. Another cache server. So as that starts up, we can now see we've got four members and three are storage enabled. And if we go back to the cluster overview tab, we can now see the available memory or the total cluster memory is higher and the used memory has gone up a bit because we've added a bit of data as well. Now, let me actually run some queries to put a bit more load on the uh, system. So this will do random puts and gets in our cluster. So if we go back to the caches, you can see we've got another cache called dist test. So let's select on that. So it's just going doing random puts and gets. So if we look at the services now, we'll, we will start seeing some thread utilization. So in this particular thing, it's doing random puts, random gets, and random removes. And it's doing them in, in bulk. We can see now we've actually got a thread utilization of 33%. So out of all of those 15 threads, 33% of them were utilized. So for example, five out of the total threads. We can then see the task average duration is being updated, any task backlog we've got, and the request average duration. So the thread utilization is probably the most useful uh, thing here. We can see whether our um, cluster is being overutilized. So let's actually start a bit more. And we can now see here, at some points in time, these are sort of snapshots every 15 seconds, we can see that some of the nodes are getting 100% utilized. Okay, so we can start to do some analysis on the data as we see it. So we can see here the thread utilization is now 33%. So here I can see there's 5 out of 5 or 100% of the threads are actually busy doing work. If we had 100% across all members, then perhaps there's a case uh, increasing the thread count. So if we look at um, each of the individual tables, so if I can, I can right click and save the data, so I'm going to save it as service.csv. Yep, I'll overwrite that. So let me edit service.csv. And what it does is just jumps a CSV format of whatever table you're at. So that can be quite useful for further analysis. And we also noticed here on the distributed cache, I can do a report scheduled distributions. If I click on that, at the moment there's no distributions that are currently scheduled for this service. So if the cluster was rebalancing, you would see the information here on the individual services and what members are waiting for what partitions, which is quite useful. So for the next part of the demonstration, I want to show you how we can connect to a managed coherent service cluster. In 12.1.2 of WebLogic and Coherence, we introduce a concept of managed coherent servers. This is all about the tighter integration of coherence within WebLogic and allowing you to use the WebLogic framework, the WebLogic servers and clusters to run your coherence artifacts and deploy your coherence artifacts. So what I've got to find here is I've got a coherence cluster, which has got two members there a case server web logic cluster which is going to be our data tier and a web app web logic cluster which is going to be our app tier. So if we look at these clusters we can see they've also got two members so the data tier has got case server 1 and case server 2 managed servers and web app web logic cluster has got our web app server 1 and 2.
if we look at our deployments, we've got a couple of deployments here. We've got our GAR, which is our grid archive, which contains all the artifacts for running your coherence applications. We've got an EAR, which actually includes the GAR and a WAR file as well. And we've got a couple of apps, called one called Aussie and one called Test, which are actually configured to use Coherence Web. So Coherence Web is about storing your HTTP session in coherence. Now I'm going to connect to the domain runtime mbean server, which is hosted by the admin server. So there's a script we've supplied as part of the sample application, which allows you to do this pretty easily. So we get the JMX service URL, and we just need to run our set domain in. So as we run jvisualvm, When we go into the applications, we can see the WebLogic server process is running, but we actually want to connect to the domain runtime Embian server, so we're going to add a JMX connection here and use our credentials. And we'll save them. And in the same way, when we connected directly, it will automatically detect that cluster Embian and display the coherence tab. We can see that we've got the cluster overview, machines, members, as we saw before, but we've got a couple of extra tabs now because we've got extra functionality enabled. So we've got proxy servers enabled in this environment, so automatically the proxy servers tab will display, which will show you each of the individual proxy servers and the load on them and the total number of connections. And we've also got a coherence web tab, which shows you the applications and how many session objects are being stored. So if I run JMeter to apply some load onto that uh, web application. So I'll set that going. What we'll see is the HTTP session counts increase and we can see that the average session sizes will increase in a moment as well. So from this you can see that the JVisualVM plugin can be used to monitor managed coherent service clusters as well as standalone clusters. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.